Look at that baby. Now this looks a little bit different you know, than a typical condensing boiler. Normally a condensing boiler is a relatively small unit that would hang on a wall and directly vent to outside. But some of the issues that arose with these smaller units, you'd put them in, you'd connect them to existing piping that were filled with sludge. So here's a heat exchanger from a typical wall hung boiler. The burner would sit right here. You can see right here, this is actually the heat exchanger where water goes through it. It spirals around and water passes through it. The burner sits here, tries to drive through and exhaust to the back. What can happen is it can clog in a couple of different places. Right here on the water side, see the sludge that's right here? And that'll affect transfer over time and clog it. But also on the burner side, you see these sections, they're really close together. And you can see impurities right here. That can trip an error code, no heat call. Homeowners are not happy that their super efficient boiler doesn't give them any heat. So one way the manufacturers try to deal with the sludge issue is have a dedicated circulator pump to push water through this heat exchanger so nothing can clog. And they also will do a dirt separator right here. Well, this new unit addresses all that. Now here's the unit here, but I brought a cutaway today. It really helps to understand what's going on inside. Now there's a gas burner right here that looks a little different. This is a stainless steel mesh. The gas will come in here and just, this will glow like an orange orb. Heat will go into this combustion chamber right here. Now behind it, and really all around it, is water, and plenty of it. Look at the difference in terms of water quality. So there's no real place for sludge to collect. So now the burner comes on, it drives downward, not upward, down through these heat exchanger sections right here. Now these are crosshatch, and they squeeze all the heat out. And look at the difference. There's plenty of water right here to take all that heat away. And by the time it does, by the time it gets to the bottom right here, there's hardly any temperature left. Flue gas temperature down here might be 150 degrees, where you might have been 700, 800, 1,000 degrees up here, but it just squeezes down to nothing. And the only thing left down here, by the way, in this little white thing, is condensate water that's a byproduct of combustion, and that'll go to a condensate neutralizer. So flue will leave here at a low temperature. Now, what do you do with it? In the old days, we always went into a chimney. You can't go into a chimney because there's no flue gas temperature left, so we have to use a special plastic vent. Now we thought about putting it right into the chimney right here, but local codes just changed last year after so much snow, they don't let you run the flue pipe, this plastic pipe, up through the chimney without letting it go another three feet above the top of the chimney, which looked like a flagpole. Homeowners didn't want that. So what we did instead was to run this through the building and up through the roof to make it look like an old conventional plumbing pipe. All right, Kevin, how do I help you here? Just hold up, check the level, Archie. Okay. There you go. All right, Kevin, that looks pretty good that way. So that completes our vent with the polypropylene up through the roof. That's great. We still have combustion air to come in through this PVC line to right to the back of the boiler. Great job, Kevin. Thanks. So now we've got plenty of work to do still. Here's our boiler. Here's our very smart control. But now we've got to leave with the hydronic piping off the back of the boiler. So we're going to have a supply and a return that's going to come over right here. Now we have to think about what we have to deliver to the building. First, there'll be a circulator pump right here, and that'll go up to all the existing radiators or baseboard in the building. Now we've got a couple of different manifolds right here, one for wood floors with radiant and one for tile floors. On each of them, we're going to have a separate mixing valve right here that'll have a control on it to put just the right water temperature out for wood floors. It'll have a really smart circulator pump right here that'll just change its speed according to what the load is into the building. We'll have another mixing valve and pump right here. And we'll also have power heads on the manifold right here with local thermostats that'll come down a wire to this point right here. The last thing for hydronic piping is we're going to come over here with another circulator pump and we're going to feed into a coil like this that sits inside the stainless steel tank to make hot water for the faucets. So we end up here with a 96% efficient heating system doing everything in the building on this job where we're remodeling. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button.
make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.